Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the Books, books your books. online librarians. And we are here with a picture book book haul. We have board books, easy readers, and lots of picture books today. So we're going to try to keep these to 30 second reviews. Now, ahead of time, just so you know, all of these books are review books from the publishers. And I read the board books, so we're going to start with those. This is a touch and feel book, Frozen Everyone Loves Olaf. This is just a really cute, fun, short touch and feel book with your favorite Frozen characters. Not a whole lot more needs to be said, but Sven is so soft. <laughs> okay, Disney First Colors, Shapes, and Numbers. Again, these are review books from Disney press the last one and this one this has to be the cutest board book that covers that I've ever seen covering your first colors shapes and numbers so just because it has this adorable Disney characters that you love and what I really like is they threw in Wreck It Ralph Penelope Von Schweetz yes Penelope so I thought that was really fun that they added her in with the classic characters. It's a Small World Shapes. This is a really short board book covering some shapes. But not only is it set in It's a Small World with your Small World characters, it has some shapes that aren't necessarily the ones you generally see, even though it's so short. Like a crescent. So anyways, that was just kind of fun, and I liked that it was a little different than usual. Okay, this one is absolutely adorable. One Grumpy Bruce. This is Ryan T. Higgins. I love Very it, Bruce. short, easy, and it only goes to 10. I'm not going to tell you what you have to count, but of course, there are 10 things you have to count. And they're from the Grumpy Bruce world. Such an adorable little board book. Mm -hmm. Jungle Cruise Animals. So this one, you, the pictures are just so pretty. And it's set in the jungle world. I'm just gonna show you this page again just because it's such a pretty butterfly. So there are things you have to find on the page. They're not that hard to find. Cause it's a board book. <laughs> it's not Waldo. Olaf's Frozen Adventure. This is a light up book. And when you open it, I'm gonna open it, it to a page. Up. That's the scary page. Anyways, I don't know if you can see the lights flashing, but every page has lights that flash, and I thought that was kind of fun. I don't think I've seen a board book that does that. I did have to pull the little tab out of the battery on the back, so just be aware. This was just real cute. Some things in Olaf's world that have lights in them and sharing those. Okay, Feminist Baby Finds Her Voice. A board book for Feminist Baby. And this one goes over some characteristics that a good baby would have. Sharing and making sure everyone gets toys, stuff like that. Star Wars, a storybook collection. This covers from Phantom Menace all the way through to the newest movies. It has a lot of stories. It has a lot of stories, but for the fans who like specific books related to certain movies, it also tells you which stories go with which movie. Nice! So you'll notice that they're very detailed, colorful, vivid pictures, and the stories are fun and they're perfect for bedtime. The first couple are in Spanish, Puedo Jugar Yo También. This is by Mo Willems. This one is Can I Play Too? And so Gerald and Piggy have made a new friend, and it's this snake, and they want to play ball together, but snakes don't have arms. So what will they do, and how will everybody be included? I don't think I've read this one or our next one in English. As with all of them, these are all review books from the Disney book group. And I have, of course, read them all in English and they are super cute. This one's from Hyperion. This one won the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award. We use the Spanish ones to teach tenses and to learn new things in class too. Estas lista para jugar afuera? Are you ready to go outside and play? Elephant and Piggy want to go out inside and play, but what are they going to do because it is quite the rainstorm. How are they going to have fun? These are both just really cute, fun books, and I laughed pretty hard at the end. Our next Hyperion Mo Willems review book, I Lost My Tooth, 
This one is Unlimited Squirrels. I believe this is their first Unlimited Squirrels book. Yes. So they have at the bottom corner, you can't necessarily see it, but there's these little icons down here. And, and they have- Acorn emojis. Yeah, acorn emojis to tell you how the characters are feeling. So you go through a big event about losing the tooth, but he lost, didn't just lose his tooth, he lost his tooth. And so they're having some emotions and they're a little confused <laughs> about that. But what I like at the end of the story is he throws in a research question. So you have to research that with him and then he helps you, gives you some answers to see, you know, you can see if your research matched up. There are some jokes. Then there's a little quiz at the end. It's really kind of fun that he threw all of that in at the end of the story. This is an elephant and piggy like reading book. And this is by Lewin Pham, the itchy book. These dinosaurs have a problem. They are all itchy, but they found a sign and dinosaurs do not scratch. So don't read this book when you're itchy. <laughs> well, <laughs> it will make you want to scratch. Anyways, it does go over <laughs> some things that commonly do make people scratch and they make the dinosaurs itchy as well. So maybe a good way to deal with learning about allergies or just being itchy. It makes me itchy just thinking about that book. Okay, <laughs> this is a review book from Lucasfilms and Disney. This is Star Wars Search Your Feelings, a Glaff Basic Edition. These are just real short introductions and this one goes over an entire host of feelings so again like at the end you kind of have like the little emojis and just a shortcut of feelings so you can help use this to talk to kids about their feelings and each one has a poem to explain a little bit about what that feeling is or why you might feel that way or why these characters felt that way hope by matthew cordell this i love the illustrations in this one and this is a book that really i think is meant to be read between a grandparent and a grandchild so if you're facetiming maybe send a copy to the grandchild and read it while we're facetime with them you can have a copy too there is It'd another really book special this author wrote called dream i believe mm -hmm. and i really like the pictures even though they're just these simple watercolor sketches they were really cute i loved part-time princess part-time mermaid girl by day mermaid by night by deborah underwood and illustrated by cambria evans this was the cutest little book and it's about this girl who when she dreams at night after she goes to sleep she becomes a mermaid her brother plays into the story i'm not going to tell you how but these are her adventures at night when she's asleep and dreaming a boy a bear and a balloon this is inspired by christopher robbins by Brittany rubiano illustrated by mike wall this is the opening of christopher robin movie and this is the part where he's with Pooh Bear and their adventures together with the Huffalumps at the beginning. Aww. So you can just see the pictures really quick. If you've seen the movie, you know the story. Christopher Robin is a middle-aged man and something happens. He has to go back to the Hundred Acre Wood and he runs into his friends. This one I think was one of my favorites. This one is Are You Scared Darth Vader? It's by Adam Rex. Oh, and it I is love done his stuff. only as Adam Rex could do it. Darth Vader is alone in the woods and these scary creatures like witches and ghosts and vampires and werewolves are all coming after him and he's not scared. He's Darth Vader. So what would Darth Vader be scared of? Yeah. Read this book to find out. It's so cute and I really liked the pictures. They did just a really good job. I'll show you the first page. So they're just really cute and the words are nice and big and bright. It's just fun. This is a new series from Learner. It's a review book from them, Crayola Color in Culture. This one goes over just a variety of colors in how colors are incorporated into culture. They have different meanings and different things that they are traditional for. Like in China, red is good luck. It's part of New Year's and weddings and all of that and different cultures and what colors mean. There are other books in here, uh, nature, science, and art. This book was adorable. The Magic is in You. And this is by Colin Hostin and Brooke Vitale, illustrated by Grace Lee. Pictures are beautiful. They're your favorite Disney characters. 
and they encounter challenges. It just goes through the different characters and some of the things that they encounter and to remember that the magic is in you and more than just magic, but your courage and everything else. The, after the magic is in you, that magic gives you Which other you strengths. Overcome. Yeah, other strengths to overcome. Just remember that you can do it. This would be a great book as a gift when somebody's having a hard time for some reason. Like, unfortunately, if a child, you know, is going through cancer or whatever, you know, you do have to talk about that, but your internal attitude is so important. We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins. This is a dinosaur book, and we used this one with our seventh graders this year. And <laughs> we, we did. <laughs> seventh graders can be a little scared at the beginning of the year. Or sixth graders if you are in a middle school that starts with sixth grade. In this one, dinosaurs going to school with regular children, like human children. And you just kind of remember you don't eat your classmates. And Dinosaur has a very <laughs> difficult time not eating her classmates, just so you know. It's funny, it's cute, and it's adorable. Thomas Paine, The Dangerous Word. This is by Sarah Jane Marsh, illustrated, illustrated by Edwin Fotheringham. This follows the story of how Thomas Paine came to America and how he was an activist and came out with the pamphlet Common Sense. The illustrations are well done, text is a tad bit long, but it is informative and will be useful in history classrooms. Probably eighth grade for this one, maybe fifth so. and eighth grade. Off and Away by Kale Atkinson. This follows the story of a girl whose dad has come down with a nasty sea cold and he actually delivers messages in a bottle to people in the sea, like different animals, and the girl is actually afraid of what is underneath the sea. So it takes a lot of courage for her to get out and deliver her dad's bottles. I really like the illustrations on this. They're gorgeous. The text is simple and easy to follow and it will make a fun read aloud. This story is for you by Greg Bazzoli. This is perfect for your toddlers. It covers why you matter, basically. From your nose to your toes. And it's a friendship of a boy and a girl with Leek and also another fun read aloud. This is God Bless America by Don Nucci, illustrated by Greg Blivka. This is the story of how the song God Bless America came to be. It's the story of Irving Berlin. What's interesting is Irving Berlin wrote a lot more songs than I ever realized he wrote, which was kind of fun. Another one for those who are covering the song in history class or the story of Irving Berlin. So fifth and eighth grade curriculums. Dear Substitute, and it is by Liz Garten Scanlon and Audrey Vernick, illustrated by Chris Rashka. This is a really funny story because the main character isn't so fond of her substitute, Miss Pelican, and each one is a different letter slash poem to whatever he, they're talking about on the page. For fans of Chris Rashka, you'll probably appreciate the illustrations. Company is coming! This is by Arthur Yorinks, illustrated by David Small. So two aliens show up at our main character's house and they seem awfully nice, but the elderly man and woman are worried that they are there to conquer Earth. Here is where, when it lands, this is the, their barbecue style alien ship. And later you'll find when all the FBI and the government and CIA and all those show up and are waiting to see what the little aliens will do. Super cute, funny picture book. Companies going. So in this one, the old lady and the elderly man get invited to the alien's planet to cater the alien sister's wedding. And the story is in reverse with the aliens and how they handle two humans showing up on their planet for the first time. Jungle Cruise. So this is narrated by John Lasseter. Illustrations are by Erwin Madrid. And the words are by the Disney Imagineering and Jungle Cruise skippers. So this book is super cute and super funny. So it supposedly covers about two and a half weeks in the book. Of course, watch out for the tigers. They can jump 15 feet and you're only 15 feet away from them. And the rhinoceroses who have very pointy horns. Silly, funny, will make you laugh and it has a great narration. It has a CD in it and it's done by I, John Lasseter. Drawn together by Min Lee and illustrated by Dan Sutat. Is it a wordless picture book? It is hybrid. It is part wordless and has a few words on it throughout the book. But it follows the story of a grandpa and his young boy who 
can't quite see eye to eye, so they decide to create their own world together. I like this book because it intermixes the kid's illustration way of illustrating and the grandpa's way of illustrating and kind of makes this fun mix of different art styles to show you how the art is drawn together. For fans of art or who just like a cute picture book, this is a perfect book for you. Poe Won't Go by Kelly DiPuccio, illustrated by Zachary O'Hor. This follows the story of Poe the Elephant. He is stuck in traffic sitting on something and he won't go and nobody can figure out why. Why is this elephant sitting in the middle of traffic? You have to read to find out, but the answer will surprise you. This is Vampirina in the Snow, written by Anne-Marie Page, illustrated by Lu Yen Pham. So Vampirina is going to tell you how to best enjoy a snowfall after the snow is on the ground. From sledding to making snow angels, she is going to show her monster family how to properly enjoy snow. Perfect for fans of Vampirina, cute illustrations, fun story. The Get Cat in the Hat or El Gato in Sombrerado by Dr. Seuss. This is a bilingual version of The Cat in the Hat. Y'all know the story. Circumo el Bambu. This follows the story of a little panda who wants or to be like... Be like the bamboo. Or be like the bamboo by Ismael Kala. This follows the story of a little panda who wants to be like the bamboo. Flexible, tall, strong, and high in the sky. And... Yeah. It is written in both English and Spanish on each page. And the translation is well done, easy to follow, and it works well in context with the English. Grow up, Ant-Man! This is by Brandon T. Snyder. Ant-Man is told by his daughter that he needs to grow up. So instead of being small, he grows bigger and bigger and bigger. But I'm pretty sure that's not what she meant. So for fans of Atman and the other ones in the series, you'll want to pick it up. It's a very fun story. Wilma's Way Home, The Life of Wilma Mankiller. So Wilma Mankiller was a... Wait, it was written by Doreen Rappaport and illustrated by Linda Kukuk. So Wilma was a chieftain for the Cherokee in Oklahoma. And this follows her story of her childhood, of how she was driven out of Oklahoma and how she came back with her daughters later in life and was an activist for... Native American rights. So this is good for older kids who are looking for a biography, and, but don't want one too long. Good illustrations, good easy to follow story that seems pretty true to what I know of her life. Recommend it for anyone looking for a short biography. William Wakes Up. This is by Linda Ashman and it is illustrated by Chuck Gronick. This is, I would say, I would almost call this like a version of the Little Red Hen, only with humans. So they have a friend coming to visit and everybody is supposed to wake up to help get the house ready and to get the treats ready for their friend that is visiting. But a couple of the monsters, they just can't get to wake up. Can they get them up in time? Great bedtime story. Good for a lesson on how to chip in and help out. Olaf gives thanks. Colin Hostin and illustrated by Olga T. Moskia. So for fans of Olaf, this is a must-have. It's all the things Olaf is grateful for. And even when it's not Thanksgiving, it's the perfect time, any time, to enjoy Olaf from, for his carrot nose that he's thankful for and he loves it more than anyone knows. <laughs> super cute illustrations, super simple text, perfect that could work as an easy reader or as a picture book. Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. This is, of course, the song. Illustrated by Shane Cluster. This is the song of Spider-Man, and you can enjoy it on CD or in picture book format. There is a CD. There is a CD. And very vivid, bright, eye-catching pictures to go with the song as well. Mulan's Lunar New Year by Natasha Yim, illustrated by Sophie Lee. This covers Mulan and kind of has pretty true to the story of Mulan, but it's kind of fun because it covers the tradition during the Lunar New Year. And there's glitter on the cover. Glitter! Perfect for anyone who loves Mulan or who is interested in learning about Chinese New Year. So this is Dance of the Realms, and it has a four by Misty Copeland. It is by Clyde P. Glass, also illustrated by Marco Bucci. So Misty Copeland is a famous dancer who used to dance in or maybe still does dance in the Nutcracker. I love the pictures on this that are from the movie. Very vivid and fun to look at. 
I liked me more than the text, but the text was cute too. It of course follows a simplified version of the Nutcracker. It's by Amy Fellner Domney and Nate Evans and illustrated by A.G. Ford. Santasaurus is a cookie who wants to be Santa's cookie, but he keeps getting passed up for all the other cookies, including the star, the bell, and the gingerbread. And he just wants to be enjoyed. So he tries everything in his power to get onto Santa's plate, but somebody keeps putting him back, and it makes him sad. Will he figure out a way to become Santa's cookie? So it's super hilarious, especially if you've read any of the other source books. And I recommend it for any dinosaur fans, Christmas or not. I think I have a feeling I know what's going on with that one. <laughs> Olaf and the Three Polar Bears. This is written by, also by Calliope Glass. And this is just how it sounds. It's Goldilocks and the Three Bears story. But Olaf is the Goldilocks and the Three Bears are polar bears. So he makes his way to the house of the three bears and has some few mishaps like breaking bowls and breaking chairs but when he comes back he wonders a few things for a fun three bear story with an Olaf twist this is perfect for fans of Frozen great pictures Santa Bruce by Ryan T Higgins poor Bruce will he ever be able to get a break so it is winter time and he hasn't hibernated because goslings don't want him to. And it's so cold! He decides the only way he's going to survive is to put on his red long underwear and his red hat. But he has a problem. Now everybody thinks he's Santa Claus. And all the forest animals and children come to tell him what they want for Christmas. But you can imagine how well that goes over with our favorite grumpy bear. Bye. Sleepy the goodnight buddy. Bye. Drew DeWalt, illustrated by Scott Campbell. This little boy has a terrible time falling asleep and tries everything under the sun to get out of it. So his parents give him a good night buddy. Well, it turns out the good night buddy is alive and causes him way more problems than he could ever imagine. Will he ever get a chance to fall asleep? And this is by the author of The Day the Crayons Quit, so you know you're going to love it. Oh, those were really good books. And you know the illustrations are going to be fun as well. Have you heard of Lady Bird? These are poems about first ladies. And it is by Marilyn Singer, illustrated by Nancy Carpenter. This is the sequel to Rutherford B. Who was he? And each one is a poem about all the first ladies and what they did as when their husbands were the president. And it's perfect for introducing the different people throughout history that made a difference depending on what age group you want to cover it you can go anywhere from fifth all the way up through junior high henry sats by mike Wu. a boy goes to visit his grandpa and discovers all these fun hats that are up in the attic he finds a box with all these cool hats from a race car helmet to a scuba diver's helmet to a circus man's hat why does his grandpa have all these cool hats and this is a pixar animation studios artist showcase so these are done by the artists from pixar so of course they're going to be good pictures and of course a very cute story. It's time to give Kira a break. I have our easy readers. Our first one is Five Tales of Fun, World of Reading, Level 1 Books, Five Level 1 Readers, Simple Text, Word Repetition. And this one covers five I think we've reviewed in the past. I think we've done all of them. Ice, Ice Puggies, when the puppy dog pals need some ice to make iced tea for their their human friend. Of course, you gotta go to Antarctica to get that ice. And not the store, Antarctica. <laughs> Mickey's Perfecto Day. That one is Mickey and Minnie and a race, Roaster the roast in Italy. And Bunga the Wise, a Lion King book. Scare B&B, &B, which is Vampirina. And the last one is Donald's Stinky Day, where, oh my goodness, everybody's just telling him that he just stinks. Anyway, so five real cute, easy readers all in one book because kids go through these books fast. This is Hissy's Big Day. The puppy dog pals want Hissy to play with them and she, she wants to play too and go and do the things that they like to do. But the only problem is Hissy doesn't like to do what the puppies like to do. She's a cat after all. 
Yes, exactly. We'll hissy have fun with the puppy dog pals. This one is a pre one reader, so easy vocabulary, word repetition, simple short sentences. That's your preschool kindergarten level. This one is Puppy Dog Pals Pups on a Mission, and they have added something new to this one. Pretty much every page has a fact on the bottom about, oh, fun. usually about dogs. And so you have a nice story and Bob comes home and Bingo and Rolly want to play. The only problem is they don't remember where they left their ball. <laughs> <laughs> and she's laughing because my Our dog loses it all yeah, the time. Linus usually can find his ball, but sometimes he can't. And it's always right where he left it or in a hole nearby. <laughs> Or Lucy hid the ball. Yes, Lucy does hide the ball sometimes. Any puppy dog owner who has a retriever, usually at least, will know the feeling. This is pre-K through first grade word repetition, simple text, and it is quite funny. Where could that ball be? This one is a review copy from Zunder Kids, Bernstein Bears. We got this from the author. It's Brother Bear and the Kind Cub. Brother Bear and this cub meet and they want to play. And they play with model airplanes and rockets. And the thing is, anyone who's played with model airplanes or rockets knows that they often break. This is level one, again, simple sentences. These are I can read books, so they're slightly different, but this is, again, a beginning reader. It's not the emergent, so it's it's probably the same as the level one on the world of reading. This yeah. is a living lights faith story. So there is one Bible sentence and topic built into this book. If that's not something you believe in, it's still going to be a good moral lesson in the book. And I don't think it'll be a problem at all. The Nocturnals, the Moonlight Meeting. This is a level two grow and read book. So it's a little bit harder. It has some chapters in it. This is for grades one through two, uh, as the publishers put it. Long text, problem solvings, bigger vocabulary words. The Nocturnals are just really cute characters and they find and meet new people and characters in the world. There's usually a problem they have to solve and that they encounter and deal with. They're just kind of fun, cute characters overall. This is the second Nocturnal book I've read. And this is a review book from the author. Vampirina in the Fall. This is a level one Vampirina story. This goes through just all the fun, exciting things throughout the fall, all the way to the end of fall. And of course, fall is a perfect time for vampires. And there are lots of Vampirina type things in here for the monsters to do. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't think it matters if it's fall or not, because this book just fits perfect with Vampirina. Disney Princess, The Friendship Bridge. These are from A Girl's Imagination. Here is why I love these. This is level two, simple storylines, contractions, compound sentences, kindergarten through grade two, depending on reading. You have the Lego minifigure princesses. And there is this cute little puppy. Now, while we all know puppies are adorable, but they can cause some problems. Oh yes. And you have all the princesses, so you can see all the princesses there. Just these beautiful illustrations, but they have to work together. What I like about these ones is they always have a problem to solve. And that is such a good thing. So it fits also with the whole maker thing because they always make something to help them solve Ooh. the problems. So I love that one. And this one is lost and found. Something has been lost. Again, the puppy is in this book as well. They have to try to find, well, the puppy makes a mess, he's muddy. Something is lost. Jasmine's lost it's something very important. And the girls need to find it. Of course, they have to solve a problem. They always make something. So you have all those good things built in. Hey, Marvel Superhero Adventures. These are the Avengers. This is just real quick. Who are the Avengers? You introduce them to them and what they can do. Stickers, really, really short. Who are the Avengers? Meet Ant-Man and the Wasp. This is an introduction to Ant-Man and the Wasp. Exactly how it is, meet them. What can they do? What kind of powers do they have? What are their alter egos? And they're part of the Avengers. Marvel Spider-Man, this is Miles Morales. All these ones have been level one. Who is Miles Morales? Who is Peter Parker? Who's Spider-Man? These are just real simple introductions to the characters. Star Wars Resistance, meet the pilots. Same thing. 
who are the pilots and the spies in the Star Wars Resistance? So you get to know some of just the basic character introductions. First introduction to Star Wars, this is a level two reader. This one's also level two. This is Solo, a Star Wars story, Meet the Crew. Who are the crew for Han Solo? Just again, who are the characters? And a bit, this one includes a basic adventure, one that repeats that's in Solo. Chewie and the Courageous Kid, this one includes a little girl, a Wookiee, and Zaro. So Chewbacca and Zaro. And the pictures are pretty cool on this one. The ship breaks down and it needs fixed, and Chewie runs into and meets Zaro. One is Train Heist. It's a Solo Star Wars story. You know, if you've seen the movies, you know these basic plot lines, but these are for kids, an introduction so that they'll be ready for more later. Who are Beckett, Val, Rio. This one is a read-along storybook with a CD. This is a very abbreviated, shortened version of Ralph Breaks the Internet. It's a summary <laughs> of the movie and adorable pictures from the movie. Yep. The characters on the CD are the actors. So your voice, you have Phil Johnson's the narrator, and then you have John C. Riley, Sarah Silverman, Gal Gadot, and Taraji P. Henson. I like these because they usually have sound effects too. They do. Duck Tales, this one has two stories, Living Mummies, the Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and the cousins. Webby. Webby. The cousins are taken back to the tomb of a pharaoh. There's a treasure. And everyone knows that when you are inside of the pharaoh's chamber, that you don't touch the forbidden objects. This is not a new plot line. No. <laughs> but <laughs> with these little ducklings on the adventure, chaos it's will guaranteed. ensue. And a new plot line will ensue. <laughs> tunnel of Terror. Flip the book over. An abandoned sun subway tunnel with warnings. Somebody does not want them there. And there's scary noises and something is happening and they are in trouble, as usual. Too bad and good luck. They don't know how to stay out of trouble. Nope. Hip and Hop in the House, a free-flowing tortoise in the hair collection by Jeff Cheskaj. I don't, I'm not good with some of these names. She throws Z's in there and I get confused. Anyways, <laughs> if somebody knows how to say this, can you please put that in the comments below so that we can learn how to say this? This is about Hip and Hop. One's a bunny, one's a turtle, one wraps really fast, and one wraps really slow. And I'm sure you can guess who's And who's. they are from some places that don't necessarily always interact. And they come up to the old school country first animal wrap off. So they need to find out who's the best rapper. They saw each other, they don't know what to do, they're kind of friends, or they will be, and they have an idea. What can they do together? So Hip and Hop decide to rap together, and everyone is a little surprised because they don't know what's going to happen or how those two are going to make it work together. There are a lot of books. <laughs> yeah, some short reviews for a lot of books from storybook collections to board books picture books and easy readers. We hope we went fast enough, but if not, you can go to the right section to review the books you want. Please put your favorites in the comments below, and until next time, happy reading. Bye! Bye.